Long tones, they're like loud vegetables. You know they're good for you, and you know you should like them, but do you? And are you doing them right? Well, grab your horn and a stick of butter. We're gonna fry up some better tone, and hopefully a better analogy. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes and product reviews, please do consider subscribing and be sure to hit the like button to make your long tones just a little bit longer. Now today we are talking about five strategies to make your long tone studies better. We're gonna cover focus and intent, greedy air, making it fun, droning, and habitual habitation. We'll cover all those, but before we begin, all the exercises we're using today come from the Saxophone Fundamentals book, the second edition. It's free, I'll put a link down below, so make sure you download that and you can follow along with the exercises and examples we're using today. First, let's start with a simple example, a long tone study of dotted half notes, descending major scale. Now, tone studies do help with endurance, maintaining the fine muscles of our embouchure. That's part of it. But more important, playing these longer note values gives us time to make micro adjustments to our embouchure and our voicing topics for another time to improve our tone. Remember, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. So holding a tone for a long period of time doesn't inherently make it better. You know this intuitively. So what we're doing is having these long note values. We're not worrying about which keys to add or the rhythm, we can focus on just holding the tone and making micro adjustments to improve the tone. So remember, as we're holding long tones, we're making improvements. Now you'll also notice we're not holding each note indefinitely. We're trying to cover a large range of the saxophone because as we add and remove fingers and we lengthen and shorten the tube, the resistance changes, the resonance changes. We have to adapt to each new note on the saxophone to a small degree. So we're also focused on changing notes. So we don't just play through the exercise, we focus on changing from one note to another, focusing on sweetness of tone between each note and homogeny. So if you're going, for example, D2 to C2, a very closed note with the secondary octave key to a very open, heavily vented note, it's gonna feel very different. So we might stop and isolate and try to make those two notes sound similar in timbre. So remember, even if the metronome is clicking, you can stop and repeat and isolate the problem areas or just some areas that need a little bit more work. Stop, isolate, repeat, and then put it in context. Concept number two, be greedy with air. Imagine you're sucking all the air out of the room like Jared from accounting. Now, I'm not interested in how long you could hold a shaky anemic note until it peters out. I'm interested in the fullness and supported tone at the beginning, which will help you hold it longer. So in order to accomplish that, we need a lot more air and air support. How do we do that? We take a big breath. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Honestly, it's something we need reminding of, myself included. In performances, we have a lot of other things on our mind. We've got the rhythm section, the chord changes, the notes, the rhythms, all these weird side keys. We have a lot on our mind, so we aren't likely consciously thinking about taking a big breath in the performance. So we have to train to do it. We do it in our practice. So here's how to do it. Plan it. When you're doing your long tones, I like to do in three beat patterns, largely dotted half notes, sometimes other patterns, but I will simply think one, to breathe, play. Giving yourself an entire beat to breathe. Now here's a couple of important things. When you breathe, leave your embouchure largely set. Breathe through the corners of your mouth, not your nose, ain't nobody wanna hear that. Leave your teeth resting on top of the mouthpiece. Keep your embouchure set, breathe through the corners of your mouth. Use that full beat to pull the tummy out as the lungs push down. Breathing is an entire huge topic we will cover at some point, but make sure you're filling up your lungs entirely, pushing them down, pulling the stomach out. Use that full beat to get a big breath. So 
So don't hope you remember to do this. Practice it. Make it part of your training until it becomes habitual. So think. One, two, breathe, play. But think it. Don't actually say it. Concept number three, make it fun. Variety is the spice of life. So let's spice up your long tones. Cooking analogy, hey? I'll do better in the future, I promise. So what we want to do is make sure we don't get in a rut where our mind goes on autopilot and we're zoning out. I have, and maybe you've experienced this as well, practicing long tones, and then you just kind of look up from your metronome and realize, like, I don't remember what I've done. Now, that certainly is going to help with embouchure, and I'm sure some, some conscious issues you're working through dealing with your parents when you were a child, but we do need to be conscious and focusing on what we're doing. So some variety will help us maintain that focus. So here's what I recommend. Every practice session have a couple of staple grounding kind of anchoring exercises. Highly recommend exercise zero and maybe one of the tone study you do every practice session. That kind of consistent grounding of one exercise. Then add something new about every month. It could be anything. It could be a folk tune. I really like doing some Appalachian murder ballads. or a famous classical melody. And if you recognize this one, let me know in the comments below to earn bonus points. And my current personal favorite is The Hum. It's from the 2015 recording of Jeff Bridges called Sleeping Tapes, where Jeff Bridges collaborated with Squarespace in a sponsored deal to create a cure for insomnia, an album of sleep-inducing tunes and spoken word dialogue. Of course. So I actually notated and adapted one of those to be a long tone study. It's in the Fundamentals book. Why, you might ask? Because it's fun. Strategy number four, tuning drones. Long tones are a great time to work on your intonation or playing in tune. Not only matching the exact tune, but playing intervals over the drone. Now that topic is beyond the scope of this video, but I do wanna make you aware of a great free resource called tuningdrones.com. There's a virtual keyboard on the screen. You press a note. For instance, you could play a um, E flat on that and then play your C major scale on alto, F on tenor. Remember, it's gonna be concert pitches on that. And that's a great free resource to have drones while you practice your long tones. So tuningdrones.com, I'm not affiliated, I don't make any money, I don't get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. So if you're a programmer or a web designer and you wanna help me make Wally drones, get in touch. Strategy number five, make it a habit, try to do every day. 
Now, practice sessions, if we have in our mind that practicing the saxophone has to be an hour long ordeal, that's gonna cause a lot of procrastination, putting it off and not going to happen. So here's a great little mind hack that I think is going to help a lot of us. Think of a practice session as just two minutes of long tones. Try to do that every day. Whereas if you're busy one day before dinner, or before you go to work or right when you get home from work, just do two minutes of long tones. That's the deal. And at that point, if you wanna stop after two minutes, you can stop. But here's the secret. You're not gonna wanna stop. You're gonna wanna keep going. But make that deal with yourself. You may consciously know it's silly, but it's a good way to trick your brain and do some long tones every day. And if you did stop at two minutes, well, that's two minutes of developing your embouchure and keeping these muscles maintained that you wouldn't otherwise have. So try to make every day, if possible, a little bit of tone study, and then more than likely, you're gonna feel like practicing afterwards. So what do you do for long tone or tone studies? What do you like, a particular book or a pattern, a melody? What do you do? Let me know in the comments below and I'll steal it and not give you credit. So I will see you next week with another lesson. In the meantime, set a two minute timer and go practice.